Welcome to Light Church Online. Thank you for joining us for today's message. Last week we were talking about Acts chapter 2 and the outpouring of the Spirit of God. As I read it and read it and continued to read that text, Peter got up on that day that the Spirit of God was poured out because something happened that day. The 12 disciples were 11 then because Judas had committed suicide. They went back to Jerusalem and they did what Jesus said. They got in that upper room and they waited. They didn't know what to expect except that the Holy Spirit was going to be poured out. Because that's what Jesus said. Don't you leave until you are endued with power from on high. They didn't know what that was going to look like, feel like, taste like, smell like. They had no clue. All they knew was that Jesus said to wait right here. So let me tell you today that it may seem like you don't know what it is you waiting on in terms of God manifesting himself. But if you can just simply obey, I'm just going to wait on him. I'm just going to wait on the Lord. I'm just going to wait on him. I'm not going to try and figure it out. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to wait on the Lord. Now, I wonder what they were doing while they were waiting. Well, we know they had to be praying. We know that that was a meeting place where they had eaten the Lord's Supper, as we call it. Depending on how long they were there, we know they probably had something to eat. In other words, they just did what you naturally do in waiting. Some of them may have to excuse themselves to go to the facilities. That would be a normal function, wouldn't it? But after they went to the facilities as they had back then, guess what they did? They came right back to do what? To wait. The Bible doesn't tell us the exact details. All it says was suddenly. <laughs> suddenly they, they heard something and they saw something. You know what it doesn't tell us? It doesn't tell us they felt something. Can you hear and see and not feel? Can you? So you don't always have to feel something in order to know something's happening. So it didn't tell us. It said they heard a sound. They described what the sound was like. And they saw something and they described what they, what it looked like to them. But it never tells us they felt anything. But something happened as a result of what they received. They opened their mouths and began to speak. And what the people heard was one thing, but it doesn't tell us that what the people heard was actually what the disciples who were speaking heard. See, that's why when it comes to spiritual things, you can't measure it and limit it to our natural understanding. Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, tried that. When Jesus was talking to him about spiritual things, Nicodemus said, Now wait a minute now, how, how can how can a man be how can a man my age be born all over again? Can he go back into his mother's womb and, and come back out again? Jesus said, Wait a minute, you you are a teacher of the law and you don't understand these things? And he said, That which is 
Spiritual is, is spiritual. In other words, you can't measure spiritual things by natural things. He says like the wind. The wind comes and goes. It blows. You don't know where it comes from or where it's going. You can't even see it. All you can see is the effects of it. And that's the way we must govern ourselves. Stop waiting on a feeling. Stop waiting to hear or to see something. Because these are spiritual things. And just because you don't feel something, or just because you don't see something, or just because you don't hear something, doesn't mean that God has not moved. They're spiritual things. And they have to be looked upon through spirit eyes. Or made us, might I say, through the eyes of our faith. So I believe, not because I feel. I believe, not because I see. I believe, not because I heard. I believe because he said. And he said, whatever you ask the Father, in my name, it'll be given to you. Isn't that what we just did? Yeah. Didn't we just ask? Yeah. Not only that, but Jesus said, if any two of you yeah. on earth, are we all here on earth? Yeah. Any two of us can touch and agree concerning anything that we ask shall be done of our Father. Did we not touch you? Did we not touch you? Well, so far, let's see, we've asked and we've touched and agreed. You, you need a third witness? Uh, is that going to be enough for you? The Bible says that on earth, there is this powerful agreement that God honors when he's moving. That's what the book of First John says. It talks about the word, the blood, the spirit. They agree. And so since the spirit of God is moving in here, don't you dare deny the power that's at work for you right now. If you came up here for healing, bless God, you ought to be thanking God you healed. And whatever it is that was bothering you, to the best of your ability, you ought to be wiggling it, shaking it, moving it, clapping it, standing on it, jumping on it, turning around on it. Right? If you came up here for finances, then bless God whatever little finances you have. Or even if you don't have any finances, you ought to grab something and say, I'm giving this in Jesus' name. I don't care if it ain't but a paper clip. I'm giving it in Jesus' name as a token of what I know God has done for me. See, church, we got to get back to faith. And stop trying to figure God out. Because that's where the devil has robbed us. 2 Corinthians 5 says the just. Hebrews says it. Says it again in uh, I think the book of is it Haggai? The just. Galatians said it's all over the scriptures. The just. That's you and me. Shall live how? Not by your intelligence. I'm not telling you to put your brain on the bookshelf and not use it. But when you're making a spiritual connection and you're trying to, you're trying to touch God, intellect falls short. That's why Jesus said, you need the Holy Spirit. And he makes the connection that cannot be made any other way. You're supposed to be a different kind of person, 
a different people than those who are outside of the family of God. Nothing about you should be normal or mediocre or average. You're supposed to be exceptional when it comes to wherever God has you. And even though it might not appear that way from your perspective, you have to believe it so that it becomes your reality. That I'm not like everybody else. Say it. Say, I'm not like people out there in the world. Say it again. Now, whenever you face a challenge from this moment on, let that be your first reminder. What is it? I'm not like everybody else. I mean, we all have the same challenge, but you know what? I ain't like everybody else. Oh, yeah, our family has some of the same issues that other families have, but you know what? I ain't like everybody else. I got a helper. Oh, yeah, I made mistakes that others have made, but you know what? I ain't like everybody else. I got somebody that fixes my mistakes. When I go to him and say, this is my mistake. All right. See, everybody else try and cover up and excuse. Well, see, I wouldn't have done something. I wouldn't have done this if you hadn't done that. No, I'm not like everybody else. So I don't have to excuse. I don't have to explain. I just have to confess. This is my mistake, Lord. So I'm bringing it to you. And he says, if you do that, because you're not like anybody else, you're not like everybody else, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to wipe it all out. But I'm not just going to wipe that out. I'm going to wipe out the stuff you ain't even told me about. Amen. Amen. That's who we are. I say that because the times that we live in are pressing against that mindset. Trying to get you to be like everybody else. Look like everybody else. Act like everybody else. And somebody needs to remind us, the church, that we are not like everybody else. That our God is not like the gods of this world. Somebody needs to remind us, you are a, you are a believer. Blood bought, blood washed child of God. And in so reminding us, there are things that ought to put us back on track. So in the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, in that 23rd verse, there is a scripture that I want, I want to leave with you because I realize that the times that we live in have found a lot of people Deceived. Hebrews chapter 10, <clears throat> verse 23 says, Let us hold fast our confession or the confession of our hope without wavering. You know what it means to waver? What does that mean? Back and forth. Well, he will. Well, he won't. Well, I don't know. Well, yeah, he will. I know God's able. I don't know if he'll do it. That's wavering. That's kind of how drunk people look. Right? Back and forth. Back and forth. Well, he says, hold fast to your confession without wavering. Now, Christianity is called the great confession because that's our way in. Whosoever shall confess. Okay, we confess our way into the body of Christ. And from that moment on, everything else that we receive is received and put in place by our confession. So when he says, hold fast to our confession of hope, well, what is your hope? When you were here at the altar just a minute ago, what were you hoping? What was it that you came for? So if, if, a family issue was why you came and we prayed and agreed on Jesus fixing it. 
you have to hold fast to that without wavering. Now what he didn't tell you is what it would look like even after you prayed. Did you hear what I said? He didn't tell you what it would, in other words, he didn't say, now, when you get back to the house, everything going to look different. It may look the same. But he says, hold fast to your confession of hope. How? How? Without wavering. You may come, you may have come this morning for some financial challenge. And it may look like when you, when you check your bank balance, it's still the same. It's still in, so, so what do you think? Just because you prayed here, that next time you checked it, it's going to be a million dollars in there. It wasn't going to be overdrawn. Is that what you thought? It may look the same, but hold fast to your confession of hope. Without, without what? Without wavering. Now, either you believe God or you don't. Either he did or he didn't. What's your confession? Well, if you came up here, I know what I confessed. I know what I agreed. And I'm not changing. He goes on to say, For he who promised... He who promised. He. Come on. He. I said he. Maybe I don't know who promised then. That's what that's what that's what the issue is. You think pastor promised. I ain't promised you nothing. All right. Don't lie on me. I ain't promised you nothing. So at the church, don't come asking me for the bill. Because I didn't promise you. I didn't quote one word from the book of Ron Shaw. Jesus was the one that said, if any two of you touch and agree. He's the one that said, if you ask anything of the Father in my name. That wasn't my promise. But this verse says, for he who promised. What about him? He's what? He's faithful. The word for is another word that can also be translated because. So the reason you ought to hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering is because the one who promised you is what? Is faithful. Now, if you, if you deem him faithful, you cannot change what you confess. If you consider him faithful. If you, if you have questions about his faithfulness, I can understand why you may vacillate back and forth. And Jesus... Or rather, James said, if you vacillate back and forth, let not that man think he shall receive anything. So if you vacillate back and forth, if you waver, you ain't going to get nothing. So we're told, hold fast. Why? Because he, 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 hold fast, Ron. Don't go back and forth. Hold on to what you confess. Because is, because is, Hold on, Ron. It might not look like it's changed. It might not look like anything has happened. But hold on because is... Hold, hold, hold what you got, Ron. Because is, is, is faithful. Hold, Ron, don't you dare change because it didn't look like it changed. Ron, don't you dare change because they said the same thing that they said before you got to the altar. Ron, don't you dare change because you got back home and they still acting a fool. 
Ron, don't you dare change because you got up the next day and went to work and the issue seemed like it was still there. Don't you dare change because now, now I'm going to say this or I'm going to ask you this so you can help me because y'all helping me. I don't know what's happening to y'all but I'm getting mine. What does faithful mean? Dependable, consistent, trustworthy, able. What does faithful mean? Not wavering. What does faithful mean? You can count on it. What does faithful mean? I like that. I think I'm going to hold on to that one. Where did that come from? Who said that? Huh? Who said count on it? Where is he? Oh, man, he's sitting down there on the floor coming up with that answer. All right. I think I'm going to hold on to that one. You can count on Jesus. I said, Ron, you can count on me. Ron, you can count on me. You, you, you can't count on gas staying the same price, but you can count on me. You, you can't count on bread staying the same price. You can count on me. You can't count on the government because they started to change after every election. But you can count on me. You may not be able to count on friends that like you and that never intend to disappoint you. But often they make promises they cannot keep. But I, I am worthy to be counted on for the promises that I make. Well, how do I know that? How do I know I can count on Jesus? I mean, I know he says you can count on him, but, but how do I know I can count on him? How, how, do I, how do I know I can count on him? I, 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 I know, I know that's a good answer, his word. But how do I know? See, I, 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 I say what? He, he's proven it, how? How, how, how did he prove it? I, I'm, I'm, I need help here. How did, how, how did, somebody say, I tried him for myself. That's what they said in the church I grew up in. But, but how do I know? You know, there have been times I tried him and it didn't look like he came through on time. So how do I know? How do I know? Well, when you cut through all of the religious cliches, there ain't but one thing I can point to to say, you know what? He is faithful. I can count on him because when he had the opportunity to back out on my redemption. <laughs> Remember the garden? Lord, I don't really want to do this. I, I mean, is there another way for this? He had, he had an out. But then he says, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Now that sounded good. That sounded real good, Jesus. But so far ain't nothing happened. They emerged from that prayer meeting in the garden and he's arrested. And Jesus says, if I wanted to, yeah. uh, all I could do is just call. And I could, get, I could get some troops down here to get me out of this. And if that wasn't good enough, when they came to arrest him, they said, we are looking for Jesus. And he said, I am he. And the I am that he spoke was so powerful with the presence of God that the men that came to arrest him fell as dead men. He had several ways to get out. But he didn't. Finally, that day, when they flogged him and they beat him beyond recognition, he could have said, 
All right. That's it. I, 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 nope, I'm not going another further with this. But then, they lay him on a cross. And he sees the two and a half pound spikes that they're getting ready to drive in his hands and in his feet. And he hears the, the metal upon metal that knocks them into his bones. And then they lift him. And after three hours, they say, he ain't dead yet. We can't leave nobody on the cross this long. We got things to do. Sun's going down, it's coming up. We can't leave him there. So, so, so they stuck him in the side with that spear. How do I know I can trust him? <laughs> because he could have come down, but he didn't. I wonder if it if it had been you, would you have would you have come down if they said, okay, we'll 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 take this off of you if you just let Ron go to hell. I wonder if you'd have said, yeah, I know what you'd have done. All they had to do was show you that whip. You say, yeah, Ron, I'm sorry, Bubba. I like you, bud, but look like you're going to burn. Not Jesus. I know, I know he's faithful. I know I can count on him because when he had the opportunity to back out, he didn't. He took it all. Hallelujah. And the, as they say, the grand finale of the whole scene was when he said, Father, forgive. See, y'all hear them. I hear him. Forgive him. He didn't know what he was doing. He, he didn't even have a part to play in the fall of man. Forgive him. So if you ever have questions about whether or not you can count on Jesus, you need to go back and you need to read the end of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see what he took when he didn't have to for you and for me. That's why I keep telling people, I will never quit on him. I, will, I don't care if all of y'all decide you will never come back to church, then I guess it'll just be me and Jesus and the Holy Ghost saying in the blood still works. I might go back over into the room and give me one of them red and black outfits. And I just be up here myself saying the blood still works. If that's the way it's got to be, I ain't leaving him because I know in whom I have believed. And what he promised, I can count on him to perform. Amen. Amen. So when you came in here today. Life is a race, but you don't have to run it alone. Take advantage of your help. Receive Jesus today and he will help you with everything you're going through. God has a plan for you. The first step in that plan is salvation. Read Romans 10 and 9 and pray this prayer of salvation. God in heaven. I believe in my heart you raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is the Lord. Jesus, I call on you now for my eternal salvation. I receive forgiveness 
for all of my sin. I accept your unconditional love. Thank you for receiving me. I submit myself to you. With you as my helper, I will live according to your plan the rest of my life. Amen. If you are blessed by today's message, we encourage you to give an offering. Simply click the Give Online link on the Light Church homepage. Thank you for tuning in this week. We look forward to you joining us during our next broadcast. Have a blessed week.